Hi, I'm Ariel. You're watching She Wants the Diction, and today I'm going to be answering the question, what do rappers read? So this is a question that popped into my head a few weeks ago, just randomly. I know a lot of people don't think of it like this, but rap is a very, like, literary thing I feel like. Like the closest comparison I feel for it is probably poetry and a lot of people disagree with me about rap being like high art, about being literature, but I really think that it is because you have to have you know rhyme and rhythm and you have to tell a story and then you have to not only write your lyrics but then perform them and I just think there are so many aspects to it that make it an art form and I, I know there are people out there that will disagree with me but I, I think that rap is an art just like the art of writing novels or books or whatever so with that in mind i thought well what are rappers reading what books are they into like this is something that i'm very very curious about like just for myself and i had never really seen anyone talking about it either i feel that maybe the overlap between classic book readers and hip-hop is probably like relatively low and i used to actually be a big hip-hop head myself now i don't keep up with it as much these days and that's primarily because I feel uncomfortable with a lot of the misogyny that's really perpetuated within the rap genre. It is very, very prevalent right now, especially in our current recent rappers and the, the new wave that's come through. And also there's just a huge amount of hypocrisy. Like rap is primarily a male dominated genre. And while I love it for being primarily black, I think there are a lot of issues with black men condemning racism and then having lyrics that are like, um, just very misogynistic like I don't understand being woke on one subject and not on another like They'll be woke in the areas of like racism and like black culture and things like that But then they won't be woke about like homophobia or issues that the LGBTQ community faces so I struggle a lot with that because I feel like it's important to like be woke for all issues not just things that directly affect you so if you guys want to read more in depth about that i will link to a blog article that i wrote a couple years ago about it it's called woke male rappers misogyny and me so that will be in the description if you want to know more about that but <laughs> in choosing these rappers it was important to me to choose rappers that i was already somewhat familiar with so i could you know, talk about their work in context, like actually know what I'm speaking on. Secondly, it was actually a lot harder to find information on these rappers than I thought it would w than I thought it would be. I had to do some really deep dives like into literally like Reddit threads because there was just no information about there about rappers who read, like very, very little. I had to to dig this shit up. And as far as like the rappers that I chose, I would say I'm a person that listens to primarily new school rappers, so this is not gonna be Tupac, Biggie, that's what is considered old school. The three rappers that I chose <laughs> um, were Tierra Wack, Childish Gambino, and Kendrick Lamar. I'm gonna start off with Tierra Wack. If you haven't heard of Tierra Wack, um, she is literally amazing. I started off the beginning of this year specifically looking for new female rappers because like I said, I was tired of the misogyny and I ended up finding a lot of really awesome people. I found Lizzo, Princess Nokia, and then Tierra Wack. And why she is amazing and you should listen to her is she has this album called Wack World and every track is a minute long. There's 15 tracks, so it's 15 minutes total. I would describe her style as like very playful, very whimsical. So it's not really a surprise to me that in a lot of her interviews and stuff, she talks about how Dr. Seuss was really what got her into writing. My mom got me like the Dr. Seuss books, like The Cat in the Hat, One Fish, Two Fish, Red Fish, Blue Fish. So she specifically cites Green Eggs and Ham as being her childhood favorite and then Wacky Wednesday as being one that she discovered as an adult. So yeah, I, I can really see her loving Dr. Seuss just because it's so colorful and the rhymes and it's so imaginative. Like Dr. Seuss has all these like made up creatures and just the world is very colorful and it reminds you of being a kid. I, I think a lot of us like grew up with Dr. Seuss. It's very reminiscent of childhood. So I could see why because her style is so like playful, she has these great visuals. Like I can really see why she would enjoy Dr. Seuss. Now I do wanna add a little addendum here that Dr. Seuss is racist. If you don't believe me and you're in a mood to ruin your childhood, go and Google some of his political cartoons. He had a lot of things to say about Jewish people and a lot of things to say about black people. And yeah, so that's just kind of uncomfortable, <laughs> but I just wanted to throw that in there because I don't want anyone to continue idolizing Dr. Seuss when in reality he was not that great of a person. So 
The second person I chose was Childish Gambino. Childish Gambino is somebody that really changed my life. Like, I'm not exaggerating when I say that. I've talked about this before, but the first time that I heard Camp, literally just changed my life because it was the first time I heard somebody talking openly about what it was like to be mixed and just all the racism and microaggressions that we deal with and he really just put it into words and encapsulated these feelings that I've been struggling with my entire life and suddenly like I was not alone like it was it was just an amazing experience that album just changed my life so where I come to the conclusion that he's into classic literature is first of all he references it in his songs in not going back for example that track I could have been a tragedy that's why these fake niggas would call me pussy or mad at me because they ain't had the smarts or the heart ain't you read the fucking book things fall apart which as you guys know is a classic a lot of us had to read it for school I know I did I'm going to put a little clip from the interview where he was cited reading this book all about existential philosophers I think it's called Dostoyevsky, Kierkegaard, Nietzsche, and Kafka and even for his promotional materials for his album when he did the like bedroom exhibit the bedroom of the boy for his album because the internet he had like a bookshelf in there that had a lot of classic literature on it and I was able to zoom in and see authors like uh, Tolstoy and John Knowles on his shelf like these are a lot of big names that are well known sort of things that you would like read or see or hear about in English class. Also if you think about the fact that Donald Glover went to NYU it kind of makes sense that he would be more English minded I think. And I mean really if you think about Because the Internet he wrote a screenplay that was supposed to follow the storyline of the songs. Like he is very literary in my opinion. So the last rapper I chose last but not least for sure is none other than Kendrick Lamar who is just an icon like literally just so iconic you want a Pulitzer Prize I mean not that he needs the recognition of like traditionally white institutions but I mean that gives him a lot of credit among people who uh, don't really consider rap to be an art form like I talked about at the beginning of the video he's just amazing um, he has the flow the delivery the lyricism and the politics in interviews when he's asked the question what books influence you his response is usually the autobiography of Malcolm X. You seem like a dude that read a lot of books. What are some of your favorite books? I wouldn't even say read. A lot of people ask me that. Okay. A lot of people ask me that. Um, I'm not gonna sit up here and lie and say I read a whole bunch of books. Name it's one weird. book you read that changed anything about you. That changed anything about me. Probably Malcolm X. And this is a book that basically <laughs> talks about Malcolm X's life. And I think if you look at Kendrick's background and then Malcolm's you can start to see a lot of similarities. Malcolm X was a very revolutionary figure. He was very political and he was also uh, pretty controversial and I think if you if you look at Kendrick you can see the similarities because his music is very political particularly his album To Pimp a Butterfly or if you listen to tracks like DNA where he raps over a sample of a Fox News broadcaster you know saying how rap is you know bad essentially like he makes a lot of political statements and just social commentary within his music and cares for the black community in a way that I think Malcolm X did as well I feel like he really like perpetuates that legacy and also if you look at their lives um, Malcolm X wasn't always the well-spoken, educated, put-together man that, you know, we know him as. For a long time, he, he grew up in the ghetto. He was like into partying and drinking and drugs. He went to jail for years and that's where he kind of had his whole rehabilitation and discovered reading and books and um, Islam. If you look at Kendrick's background, he also comes from a very uh, poor, destitute background and essentially had to come up through his successful music and look at where he's at today. He even has a lyric on DNA that talks about this. When I was nine, on sale motel, we didn't have nowhere to stay. At 29, I've been so well hit cartwheel in my estate. I, I'm such a nerd, but like researching all this and finding out about like people's influences, it's just amazing how you can directly see that like reflected in their work and their message and everything that they stand for. What I would really love to see is like a specific interview series or video series where like someone interviews rappers on like hey what's your favorite book what'd you like to read as a kid like just ask them more literary questions I realize this is a thought exercise that like not a lot of people will probably really be interested in but it was fun for the sake of doing it like uh just so fucking interesting so let me know if you guys have listened to any of these guys or if I convinced you to give any of them a shot that being said thanks so much for caring I'm gonna see you guys next week with another video peace